I hope you are. Well, I'm feeling pretty good for an old man. <laughs> I thought you was getting younger by the day. Yeah, we sure was. Uh, I got a call today I wanted to talk to you confidentially about. I won't involve you, don't want to quote you, but I just want to be sure I handle it properly. Uh, your governor called Watson and said that he was coming to Washington on two occasions. I believe he said February the 2nd and February the 6th, 7th, and 8th that he would like to bring in the senators and the congressional delegation to call upon me. And Washington's what, what governor, you talking about? governor of Georgia. Maddox. Yeah. And uh, uh, Watson said, what, uh, what, is, what is the subject matter of it? Well, he said, I just want to talk to him with the members of the delegation if we could. And Watson explored a little further, didn't quite get it clearly, but I think uh, concluded there's something about highways. The, the press stated uh, that uh, he was coming up here to see you about releasing the money for Georgia's highway. Uh, I, I saw that article in the paper, and uh, this uh, boy from over there in the fourth district just says he's going to uh, make the judge money lose. I don't know how the hell he's going to do it, but he says he is. He's the same one that's cutting these, holding back these non-essential expenditures. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good God. He gives everything except the highways and a few other things like that. He comes to his district. Who is he? He's Jack Flint, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. well, I don't see you. I think you two owe it to the people of the state if you want to see you to see him. You have to see him. On the other hand, I never I never have sat down and talked to a man that said many mean things about me. See? <laughs> And I don't, I don't want to be insulting, or I don't want to be petty or picky unish, uh, but I, my inclination be that any governor of any state that wants to see the president any time, he ought to see him the day that he wants to, if he possibly can. Well, I don't say the day that he wants to. But well, if I, he can, I, 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 I say if he can, he don't to keep him I sitting think, around. I think the president of the United States, uh, under our system, would have to talk to a governor about what he has in his mind. You know, any petition he wants to submit. But uh, I think you can be cold as hell uh, any way you want to. Uh, it's pretty hard for me to do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and this fella, if, if, he, if he knew you, he's a Maddox is a funny damn fella. Uh, he, he's a, uh, I just saw his TV stuff all the time, and it was pretty, pretty ugly about me. And I'd, I'd, I'd be surprised. He'd, uh, I'd be surprised he'd want to want to. Talk to me, but I I think it uh, that was my I just want paper that you want to see. I saw an article in the Atlanta paper I was looking at this afternoon that uh, in which he stated that he was coming to Washington to see the president try to get him to turn loose his highway money. How has his takeover uh, come about? Is he to handle it all right? He has, Somebody uh, write him a good he speech. Absolutely astonished the state. He made one of the finest inaugural addresses. That talked about how the races all had to get along together in peace and amity. Uh, he was going forward with the educational program for Georgia, and he will do that because Maddox uh, had to come up the hard way. He had to quit school when he was six years old and carry three paper routes, kept his mother feeding uh, his little brother and sister. And uh, truth by it is, I think he'd make a better gun than Callaway would have made. <laughs> uh, their, their philosophy is about the same, except Maddox is uh, more for the poor people than uh, Callaway is. That doesn't have the veneer that tells you. I think probably Jim Gray wrote that speech for him, but he made a fine speech, and it turned out he, he, the first appointment he made is an excellent appointment. He appointed as the Collective Internal Revenue, which is uh, one of the most important jobs in the state. And past, what little fraud we've had down there, the Senate around his office, he appointed Peyton Hawes, a man of impeccable uh, integrity, a strong supporter of yours, incidentally. That's good, and I hope if he asks you all, that you'll come with him. I think it'd make it easier on all of us if, uh, if yeah, uh, will, yeah. people that I know uh, uh, in the delegation, I think it would be less inclined to, to have the, the pundits provoke a big fight, you know, and start sicking him if the whole delegation's coming. And uh, he, they could, he, he has been wonderfully moderate since, he, since he's been in. I don't know how long it'll last. 
They get up here, though, you know, and get on the steps of the White House. They like to tell the president where to head in. I, I found out. I don't think you'll find him that way. I found old Romney. He came in here and didn't open his goddamn mouth. And he went out there in front of the television, and he just really got strong. I had everyone of these governors in. I talked to them about, the, about holding up these uh, expenditures and uh, asked them to hold up theirs. Told them I'd hold up ours. And I thought the first of the year, if we did, that we could cool this economy down. And some of them helped. Some of them didn't do a damn thing. Fellas like Rockefeller, he held up $100 million. Well, uh, 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 Maddox has cut about $20 million out of Sanders' truck. And uh, Sanders is committed. He did Sanders didn't know who was going to be the government. He got up the budget that they probably should have. And uh, uh, Maddox has cut about $20 million out of that. Well, we'll... Uh, I've come over there with him. I've got about what I did now. I he hadn't said beans to me about it up till now. Wilbur Mills and uh, uh, the and the Secretary of Treasury, we tried first to get you all to hold the expenditures and Senate Appropriations Committee. And I asked him to go to every member and urge him to stay with the budget and cut it down and uh, so forth. He did that. Fowler religiously did it. Then he went to Dirksen. He appealed to Dirksen. Then he went to Mansfield and he had separate meetings with all of them. Well, to make a long story short, it was it ran from uh, about to a little under three billion to eight billion over our budget, and uh, then I got all the members down here, and I got the governors in, and I got everybody that I could, and I made a deal with uh, Wilbur Mills and uh, uh, Russell Long and John Burns and them that if they would repeal or set aside this seven percent thing that uh, investment credit, that I would put it back on when it slowed down. If they'd give me that authority, they didn't. But uh, we may want to put it back on any time. But that I would uh, defer, withhold, postpone at least uh, $3 billion in federal programs, emphasized programs. And I announced that in my press conference, and I announced it uh, in a statement here, and I had the budget director announce it to the Congress, and all of them on there testifying on the bill. Now, there's a hell of a lot of difference between three billion of federal program and three billion expenditures this year. You've got to have a good deal more. Uh, you know, you know the difference between the sure. authorized and expenditures. All of them said Johnson pledged to cut three billion in expenditures, and we'd call them up. AP and UP and ask them corrected. They won't do it. They just holler about my credibility. So when I got ready to do it, I had to stretch everything I could to get five billion something in programs in order to get three billion in expenditures. And uh, I've just caught hell. And the two big items were the seven hundred, the, the billion dollar item that y'all voted to buy housing mortgages with and the uh, uh, billion two for roads, that's two billion two of it. And then we just went across the board with everything we could, deferring here and postponing there and hoping we could get by with it. I wouldn't be a bit surprised that by spring, if they keep talking like they are and everybody talking bad, I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised we won't need to add some of this. And I won't be a bit surprised I don't need to get that 7% that investment credit back on. I had it in my speech the other night. I talked to some awful smart businessmen, and they said, been a mistake. Well, he said if I had said that, asked for the authority, said every one of them would have quit buying anything. And they said, hell, we just wait a little bit. He's going to put that back on. And he right. said, right. said you'd throw us into a depression. So I took it out of my speech. Uh, but uh, anyway, now that's where we are. And uh, they are talking about holding up another three or 400 million of highway funds until we can uh, really see what happened to the economy. There's not a whole lot being done in the winter, and most of them got the contracts underway anyway, and they've got more than they ever had before. It's up between four and yeah, five billion. Up 90 and, all that and it's four to five billion, you see. We used to have a two. Been spending that 90 money, hell. We used to have two and billion program and three billion. Eisenhower came along this trust fund, and then we've all upped it. Now we've got four billion something. And, uh, uh, they've got the damnedest lobby, the highway contractors, oh, and so yeah. on. 
But they've gotten by, I've gotten by pretty well by telling you all generally, and I haven't spelled it out, you see. So these associations in Washington don't know what I've deferred. Well, I've been surprised at how well they took it down <laughs> home, the contractors are raising hell, and... Uh, they don't know too much, Dick. Uh, and the fellow that was looking for, <laughs> and, and was looking for a contractor on his road right away and been told he'd get one, uh, he may be raising hell, but generally speaking, the people down there are not uh, complaining too much about They it. haven't, this budget director tells me the reason we haven't had any more hell is we didn't spell out that we're going to take out a billion two out of roads and here's the states it comes from and here's where it comes from. Now he's got to do that when he comes up to see you all. And he got to show every item, right? You all will say, where the hell did you get it? Now put it on the line. When he does, each association is <laughs> lobbyist here. Well, read it, you see, and then he, then he'll get out wires that night and say, let's start housing, housing. They already smell, they got me on housing now, just give me hell. <laughs> but it's held since uh, September, so uh, I, I guess so. Is the economy cooling off some? Yes, yes, yes. That's just about what they want now. They want it just about. They're sorry, the two or three sons of bitches, these metal people, as they got down this thing selfish ones and they they've had good profits but they they use them they they can use copper if they can use aluminum if they can use molybdenum if they can use anything they do it they're made up for the bunch of mistake, Turner, selling that copper wheel always telling something well if we ever need it we need it now we're in a war yeah but that you've done a lot of that copper loose in the Indian, 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 ordinary channel business for trade well sure uh, but uh, uh, we haven't got to the reason we have to turn it loose because what all we're using for shells, isn't it? Oh, well, this is, I'm not talking about I know it, but they take up the, they take up the other supply, you well, see. They're supposed to replace it, but they ain't going to do it anytime soon. And uh, all this trouble in Chile and everywhere, we, we could get caught tight there. That's the only one, only one I got to complain about. That, 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 that one is, uh, the economy we added last year. Down 220 million tons. Well, but if we did, if we did that, we'd go get some more too. We'd open up these damn little mines that don't amount to lead would be off. Dick, you don't understand the problem we had last yes, year. Do, let me I tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you one figure here that you all didn't pay attention to the other night. The first 18 months of World War II, your price had jumped 16 percent, and you had OP and WTB. I did, I heard that. The first 18 months of your Korean War, they jumped 11%. Now, I moved half a million men out there since July 1965, and I've had reasonably full employment. I added 2,900,000 jobs last year. You got more people working there than four point, my, I kept it to 4.6 without a control of any kind. That wasn't lost on me. I thought that that was something. I never heard a comment about it. I never heard a comment. I thought the next morning that fellas like you'd be saying, well, my God, you know, that's the finest stabilization record I ever saw. He didn't let them sell him a bunch of economic professors on OPA. He didn't have all this red tape. He didn't have WPB. He didn't have War Labor Board. And yet, by God, he kept prices to 4.6 when they went up 11% when you had these. And they went up 16% from World War II. I think it's a. I think it's a hell of a lot more confusion than time. I saw a cartoon last night, Saturday Review. Had a great big fat fella. Had a bigger stomach than I got. I saw that line of papers carrying. He said, "Pulling that belt around him." No, he, yeah, he said to the board directors in this big mahogany line room. He says, uh, "I uh, have to tell you, I report to you as chairman of the board that." Uh, uh, this is, this is uh, notwithstanding all the harassment of the federal government, and notwithstanding all the bureaucratic red tape delays, made so much money. your company has made the greatest net profit since grandfather founded it. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that one. That wasn't the one I saw. <laughs> well, he just gave me hell, but he wound up the greatest net profit, so that's what's happening. Okay, I'll be seeing you then when Governor Mattis gets up here. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that he come bring you to see me. Well, I, I don't get in your way, Mr. President. I don't harass you. Well, you don't you never get in my way. It's always a pleasure, Dick. Well, thank you. Bye. And I'll see you soon. Bye.